Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, today we will be discussing drug abuse and drug dependence. Myself, Dr. Shantanu Tripathi from School of Tropical Medicine, Kolkata. We will have some discussion on the broad principles of drug abuse and drug dependence. Now, we all are otherwise have some kind of you can say by definition which we call them drugs, we are habituated to different types of such drugs. Take the example of having a cup of tea, what does it contain really? Why after taking a cup of tea you feel a little fresh, where is the refreshing component? what is there in a cup of tea or a cup of coffee for that matter. It is caffeine, it stimulates our central nervous system, but then is it a drug, is caffeine a drug? Think of people who are indulging in drinking or rather drinking alcohol, whether alcohol is a drug. When you discuss all these, we have also come across terms like medicine. How these two terms are different when you talk of drug, when you talk of medicine? How are these two terms different? Before we really get into more detailed discussion on drug abuse, drug dependence, addiction, development of tolerance, let us have a recap on more basic terms and terminologies, what do they mean? This discussion of today will be having on these broad heads and that is we will try to define these relevant terms, drug abuse, substance abuse, substance use disorder. We will try to define what is addiction, what is dependence or what is tolerance, what are the different drugs that are abused, what is dependence liability, harm and harm ratings of different drugs of abuse. We will try to understand the mechanism of development of dependence. We will also have some discussion on the different approaches to management of drug dependence and finally, we will summarize. Now, if you are asked to define a drug, how would you define? The most accepted definition which has been put forward by World Health Organization, it says a drug is a substance or product that is used or intended to be used to modify or explore the physiological systems or the pathological state for the benefit of the recipient. Now, this last phrase is extremely important for the benefit of the recipient and here again it is not just patient, it is recipient that means drugs can be taken by healthy subjects also, healthy individuals also. When I am not really diseased, but I am trying to prevent a disease to occur, so I am healthy and I am taking a drug, but it is for the benefit of myself so that the disease does not occur. So, all whatever has been said in this definition, it is actually intending to mean or refer to use of chemical substances or use of substances or products for the benefit of the recipients. This is what you can say that medicinal use of drugs or the products or the substances that is used for these purposes that has been 
otherwise captured in this definition is for medicinal purpose, use of drugs for medicinal purpose, medical use of drugs. And so, some people may prefer the term as medicine instead of drug, why? Simply because there might be also situations where people would be using chemical substances not for medical reasons, for reasons other than medical reasons, not for benefiting himself not for the benefit of the recipient, but then why they are taking the drugs. So, that is because these molecules or these products, these substances has have the potential to cause some pleasure response or pleasure experience, pleasant experience in the person who is taking it. So, it makes a kind of habit, if I if it is otherwise causing some pleasant response, then I would tend to take it again. So, it, it can have, it has the potential to develop into a habit, we will try to discuss all this. So, we, ha we have defined a drug, if I repeat a drug is a substance or product that is used or intended to be used to modify or explore the physiological system or the pathological state for the benefit of the recipient. It covers the prophylactic or the preventive use of drugs, it covers the cure or the treatment of drugs, if not cure for alleviating symptoms of a disease, it covers even diagnosis of a disease or sometimes not even disease, some physiological condition like pregnancy, diagnosis of pregnancy. In all these situations drugs are used, but all these purposes are medical use of the drugs. And that is the reason why many people call it call them as medicines. So, we understand now the subtle difference between these two terms drugs versus medicines, but then more routinely conventionally we do not really restrict the term drugs only for non medicinal use, we use the term drug or refer to the term drugs for both medical and non medical use. And because of this again possibly that people have preferred now the drugs which are not being used for medical purposes and which are causing some pleasure response as a result of which which can lead to habituation or dependence or addiction etcetera. Instead of calling them drugs why do not you call them substance. So, instead of drug abuse call them drug substance abuse rather. So, defining a drug of abuse the drugs that are used for non medical purposes, drugs that has the potential to cause harm not necessarily on the individual, but also to others in the society. So, they are actually called the drugs of abuse, some people may call them also street drugs. As if the drugs that are used for medical purposes, they are used in hospitals, clinics by doctors, nurses and the drugs that are not for meant for medical purposes, they are outside these institutions, healthcare institutions, they are in the street, they are used in the street, so street drugs. We also will be discussing about hard and soft drugs, what is the difference between hard and soft drugs. Now, of all the drugs of abuse, there are some drugs which do not really lead to finally addiction, we will try to understand what is the again difference between the term dependence or addiction, but then while many drugs will cause dependence, there are some will additionally would cause addiction and drugs which has the potential to cause addiction are called hard drugs. These are the drugs again which has the relatively higher dependence liability and then there are drugs which are which has weaker dependence liability which usually do not cause addiction to that extent. So, they can be called as soft drugs. So, hard drugs and soft drugs. There are also terms like club drugs, party drugs, recreational drugs. From the very terminology it, it suggests that they are used in, in club for entertainment, for fun, in the parties and for the purpose of recreation. So, these are different ways of calling the drugs of abuse, 
again there are illicit illicit drug licit drugs are those which are legally approved which are mostly used for the the medical purposes which are prescription medicines or even non prescription medicines but used for health reasons while illicit drugs are illegal drugs designer drugs also a type of illicit drugs which are produced locally or which are manufactured locally in a in a in a uh, otherwise small at, at the at the small corner of the house or in the lab so which does not have legal permission so designed for in a, in a small quantity for the purpose of consumption at the locality designer drugs and then control drugs drugs are otherwise controlled drugs control department we know that the department or the government agency that is responsible for allowing medicines to come in the market and to ensure that the quality of these medicinal products are also up to the mark. So, that is drugs control department, but then when you talk of drugs of abuse here another agency comes in and that is narcotics control. Again, this there is a it, it was possibly a little misnomer when you talk of narcotics, we always start recalling about a special type of analgesics, narcotic analgesics, which also cause sedation apart from relieving pain. So, they are narcotic analgesic, but when you talk of narcotics control, yeah, it actually refers to an agency that tries to control or that that uh, use of these drugs of abuse, whether they are of they are narcotic opioids or they are not narcotic analgesics like opioids or even other drugs which are non non opioid drugs, but which can which are also considered as drugs of abuse. So, they are they are they are also controlled by the narcotics control bureau. So, this is some of the backgrounds on some of the terms that are used in this area. So, it is important to have a uh, recap on them. Now, what is drug abuse? Drug abuse also some people as we have discussed that some people would prefer to call them substance abuse because of possible confusion, uh, because uh, the term drug is not restricted to only the uh, drugs of abuse, drug is also used to refer to any medicinal product that is used for health reasons. So, in order to avoid this kind of uh, uh, confusion probably, people have suggested that instead of this we call let us call them substance substance abuse. So, it refers to a patterned use in which the user consumes the drug or the substance in amounts or with methods that are harmful to self or others. So, route of administration is also important here particularly there are many drugs of abuse which are given by intravenous route and there is a tendency among the abusers who will be sharing the needle intravenous needle. Okay among themselves and thereby as we understand that there will be through this shared needles and syringes there is transmission of different kind of infections. And we know that hepatitis B and the HIV or HIV AIDS, so they are also transmitted through this needle sharing. Besides the drugs drug abuse also cause physical and psychological harm to the individual and also cause social harm, harm to the society. This also is linked to criminality. People who indulge in drug abuse, they are more likely to get involved in different kind of clinic, uh, criminal activity and that also has a direct link with their behavior or their, uh, their compulsion to get the drug of abuse okay, because they get addicted to it. Now, there is a term now which has come up that is called substance abuse disorder and this refers to a pattern of continued pathological use of a substance which results in repeated adverse social consequences. What are those repeated ad uh, adverse social consequences? Failure to meet personal and professional work. So, it has been seen people who indulge in abuse drug abuse. So, repeatedly they fail to meet the commitment at the personal life, at professional field, in their family, 
school guards they also the obligations as a student they cannot meet them there are interpersonal conflicts marital conflicts divorce there are other legal problems also is criminality okay so all these are otherwise found to have been common in people who are who are indulging in substance abuse this involves the overuse of or dependence on a drug leading to effects that are detrimental to individuals physical and mental health or the welfare of others and this substance abuse, abuse disorder often coexists with other mental disorders like depression like anxiety like psychosis and so that is what is called a dual diagnosis that anybody who is having substance abuse this it ha he has to be he should be also referred to a psychiatrist to exclude that whether the person is also suffering from some other mental disorder it is quite common that these two diagnoses go hand in hand that is dual diagnosis and naturally then apart from controlling the substance abuse one has to also get treatment for the primary the other disease that he is suffering from whether it is depression or anxiety etc drug dependence <coughs> how it is defined drug dependence is the inability to cut down or quit using a substance or drug despite one's best effort to do so and it is the diagnostic hallmark of drug dependence so i know that i am getting i, I have been taking some drug repeatedly i want to get rid of it i want to cut down the dose i want to quit this habit but i cannot despite i am trying to put my effort so if this is happening then possibly i am suffering from dependence on that drug now earlier the dsm4 had defined drug dependence as a maladaptive maladaptive pattern of drug use marked by the development of drug tolerance and the existence of withdrawal effects as well as having a persistent desire but inability to mitigate one's drug use so this was the definition given by dsm4 but dsm5 has changed this and no there is no separate definition of drug dependence in dsm5 instead what they have done they have defined substance use disorder and under that they have absorbed the criteria of dependence as a part of a spectrum of severity of specific substance use disorder so they say that in the under dsm5 that the drug dependence is also an is rather an an inbuilt part of ingrained part of the substance abuse disorder so there is no need to define it separately so basically then all people who are suffering from drug, drug dependence they are actually suffering from substance abuse disorder so it is an expression or it is an integral mechanism of substance abuse substance use disorders now how it happens now before that let us talk about tolerance what is tolerance tolerance refers to the decrease in effects of a drug on its repeated administration with what happens how do i know that there is actually decrease in the effect so on two counts we can understand that there is a de decrease in effect that the efficacy or the maximal effect that is lowered in a dose response curve or a log dose response curve and and the potency is also lowered or decreased if the potency is decreased that log dose response curve will be shifted to the right and the efficacy is decreased the ceiling is reduced or the maximal effect is reduced now although in this picture in this diagram two drugs have been shown drug a and drug b let us try to assume that basically it is the same drug it is two settings one prior to the chronic or repeated use of the drug drug of abuse specific drug of abuse abuse and after the post chronic use the same drug what has happened its its 
efficacy has been reduced and its potency has also been reduced because it has been shifted towards the right. So, even with the increased dose in order to get the same effect you are increasing the dose, but you do not get the that dose which you used to get prior to the uh, chronic use setting. So, it occurs because of the y tolerance occurs. So, there is these two the shift of the drug, uh, dose response curve it is downward for decreased efficacy and the rightward for decreased potency. Now, this tolerance occurs because of adaptive changes in the receptors or the transporters or the second messengers systems. So, either of these three factors or many of these three factors. The magnitude of the reward or pleasure response with drug intake declines with the repeated overuse repeated use over time necessitating proportionate increase in dosing in order to experience the same high. So, intolerance the effect here is the pleasure response or the reward and I want to experience the same pleasure again and again, but then when I am, when I am repeating the drug with the same dose I am not experiencing the same pleasure. So, I tend to increase the dose in order to get the same magnitude of pleasure and that is how it I keep on increasing the dose and I also get otherwise dependent on the drug. Coming to drug addiction on the other hand, drug addiction refers to the compulsive nature of the drug use despite physical and or psychological harm to the user and the society and includes both licit and illicit drugs. So, this is very important it is basically refers to the compulsive nature of drug use. So, I, I cannot afford not to take drug I have I must take the medicine I must take the drug although there is harm physical harm there is psychological harm there is also harm to the society, okay. but then I cannot help it. So, in drug addiction it is said there are four C's which are involved one with drug addiction the person will be losing a control over himself and his activities. He always feels a very strong craving for the drug he participates in this will participate in a compulsive drug use. So, he, are, he feels a compulsion towards drug use he cannot afford to do a, uh, without the drug remain without the drug and he usually fails to meet commitments the different kinds of commitments. So, control lost craving present compulsive behavior particularly in reference to use of drug and failure of commitments. So, these are the forces that underscores the characteristics of drug addiction. Now, when if you compare drug addiction and drug dependence unfortunately, many a times they are used interchangeably, but they are different things. Whereas, dependence is mostly a physical reliance on a substance addiction is more encom all encompassing and it addiction includes not only a physical reliance, but a mental and an emotional one. The dependence occurs when a drug is required to maintain normal function while addiction actually interferes with the individual's normal functioning. So, that is the uh, difference between these two. So, in order to in order for addiction to occur dependence has to occur, but the reverse is not true there might be people who are dependent, but who might not be addicted to a drug, but someone who is addicted perhaps has already had depend is already been dependent on the drug. Now, how it happens really when you talk of drug dependence and tolerance what is the mechanism. Now, there are many cellular mechanism have been put forward, but the most interesting and the accepted one is involving the dopamine in role of dopamine the neurotransmitter central neurotransmitter. What happens in the first time when we are experiencing intake of a drug the initial exposure or initial few exposures we experience and we relish the reward or the pleasure that is what is called a positive reinforcement. So, I have taken the drug for the first time. I have a sense of pleasure 
euphoria, I want to experience it again. So, that is what is called positive reinforcement. So, I take it again. Now, each time I take it, it activates the mesolimbic dopaminergic pathway and that is also known as reward pathway, because the kind of pleasure response that I am experiencing is because of activation of this dopaminergic pathway. So, it is responsible for giving me this reward, reward of having the pleasure and so it is called reward pathway. So, this mesolimbic pathway it actually extends from the ventral tegmental area in the mid brain to the nucleus accumbens to the prefrontal cortex and this is a dopaminergic neuron and so when it is activated there is release of dopamine at nucleus accumbens release of dopamine in the prefrontal cortex. Now, repeatedly when I am taking the drug over days and weeks I develop tolerance as we have already discussed that I am not getting enough response that is because of some adaptive change in the dopamine receptor in the dopamine synthesis. So, there is adaptive change. So, tolerance has developed due to adaptive changes in the dopamine receptors and or the transporters. Now, when, when there is acute abstinence I need the drug, I am not getting the drug. So, there will be withdrawal syndrome and withdrawal syndrome is actually due to uncompensated adaptive changes. So, there has been adaptive changes, I need the drug, I am not, I am not, I have not consumed the drug or if I have consumed, I have consumed it at less amount or if I have consumed it is of poor quality, it is not producing the same stimulation or the same activation of the reward pathway and as a result of which I am not getting the pleasure. So, that also will be I will be presenting with there will be somatization, I will be presenting with different symptoms and that is what is called abstinence syndrome or withdrawal syndrome. When chronic abstinence occurs that usually takes the months and years to occur, I develop a craving for the mechanism of craving for the drug. However, the mechanism of this craving is not fully clarified yet, but there is a craving. If I have developed dependence, if I have developed addiction, the craving would be there. Now, this is the cartoon that shows the mechanism and this is the, this is the mesolimbic pathway, dopaminergic pathway. Here it is the ventral tegmental area where the uh, neuron starts from here, the dopamine production area and then the neuron goes to the nucleus accumbens. This area is responsible for motivation and goal directed behavior and from there it goes to the prefrontal cortex and dopamine which is a neurotransmitter in the brain which is crucial to memory function uh, memory formation it helps us remembering experiences both positive and negative. So, this stamped in memory gives us the motivation to repeat the pleasurable experience, this is also important. So, because it is responsible for the memory formation and once we have experienced a pleasure response, we remember that and next time when we are exposed to the same, same drug. So, we can experience the same response again. So, this is the mechanism of drug development and in case of tolerance, the receptors over here they are getting desensitized. So, you need more molecules of the drug in order to sensitize them. Okay. So, that is how tolerance develops. The motivation for drug use actually uh, are very many it actually starts with peer pressure among young young uh, children adolescents. So, there is a lot of peer pressure in, in, in different say school environment sports environment okay, at clubs. So, there is peer pressure. So, for the first time I take and then I, I have a sense of pleasure and then keep on repeating that. Some people feel that when they are taking this drug they get relaxed. So, they try to 
whenever they feel some pressure or stress they would tend to take this. Some people feel that I feel a little energized, so I take this. People sometimes would try to relax with the intake of these drugs. Sometimes he, his attention is diverted, somebody is suffering from pain or some other suffering and then the attention is diverted. Escaping from reality in order to feel more self esteem. So, you are actually taken to an unreal world and you feel uh, elated and you feel a different kind of self esteem and some people just for fun they take these drugs, drugs of abuse. So, there are different motivational factors for different people under different circumstances and situations. The addiction potential of the drugs of abuse differ greatly, the major determining factors are the presence or and the severity of withdrawal symptoms. In order for the withdrawal symptoms to happen definitely then there has to be dependence. So, the it, it is also linked with this the degree of dependence that is produced. So, that determines also the severity of the withdrawal symptoms. Strength of the reinforcing effects, the other factors that can reinforce both the positive and the negative reinforcement. Uh, that will also count here. The degree of tolerance that is produced and the degree of intoxication that can be produced by the exposure. So, all these factors actually will determine whether the drug in under question it will uh, lead to development of addiction in the user. Now, this is a exercise whereby people have done the tried to assess the addiction potential of different drugs of abuse starting with nicotine, heroin, cocaine, alcohol, caffeine or marijuana and these are the five uh, criteria withdrawal, reinforcement, tolerance, dependence and intoxication and they have given the score. The one is the most serious and six is the least serious that means, higher score will, will have will say that it is of less serious nature. So, anything that is actually showing a lower score they are uh, their addiction liability or addiction potential is higher. So, this is how it has been shown and if we if, uh, and as you see that uh, this is one alcohol where it is relatively less heroin is also towards the lesser side and to a certain extent nicotine also, but if you think of caffeine it is on the higher side marijuana it is also on the higher side. Okay. So, let us see next. Okay. Now, coming to the dependence liability, the different drugs of abuse they have varying dependence liability. Those with very strong dependence liability include opioids, nicotine and cocaine. Those which might not be very strong, but definitely strong enough they are barbiturates, amphetamines, solvents ethanol or alcohol. Moderate ones are moderate dependence liability, ketamine, propofol, benzodiazepines, nitrous oxide and the ones with weak dependence liability include cannabis, ecstasy or MDMA, lysergic acid diethylamide or LSD. Now, you can try to remember this list through a small mnemonics onco base anesthetics says onco for opioids nicotine and cocaine o for opioids n for nicotine and cocaine co onco strong dependence liability barbiturates amphetamine solvents and ethanol the first letter of each will make it base moderate is the different anesthetics ketamine or propofol the intravenous anesthetics and benzodiazepines and the general anesthetic like nitrous oxide. So, these anesthetic agents they have a dependence liability of moderate nature and finally, the ones with weak dependence liability cannabis, ecstasy and LSD, C, E and S. So, onco base anesthetics says. So, that is the drugs of abuse with varying dependence liability. Now, coming to the harm and the harm rating of drugs of abuse. 
Now, the drugs of abuse can cause physical harm to self, can cause dependence liability of the substance and has the social harm and these three things physical harm, dependence liability and social harm they are considered together in order to assess the relative average harm score for each drug of abuse. Now, keeping these together in mind it has been calculated that heroin or diacetyl morphine that tops the list with a score of 2.77 and cut which, which is actually a plant it is at the bottom of the all the drugs of abuse that is 0 0.8 while cocaine has a score of 2.3 quite high alcohol is moderate 1.85 tobacco is or nicotine is 1.62 and cannabis is 1.33. So, coming to management of substance abuse, the treatment of substance abuse would depend on what is the drug that is causing this problem, what is the severity and nature of the dependence or addiction and what are the motivation of the abuser that is the cues and the contexts and the availability of logistics and services. So, these together all these are to be considered while planning the management of a given substance abuse. The treatment has to be multi dimensional starting with counselling the user, asking or soliciting support soliciting assistance from the support group. We have different support groups like alcohol anonymous nicotine anonymous or tobacco anonymous like that. The different medications that can be used for the management or the treatment of uh, substance abuse or dependence, rehabilitation of the uh, of the users after a treatment has been given, after de addiction pro program has been run. Now, how to rehabilitate them in their in their family, in their workplace that becomes very important otherwise there will be relapse they will go back to the same condition. Reducing the supply as well as the demand, supply means here the drug that is causing the problem. So, you have to cut down that supply and that is precisely being done always by a very alert narcotics control agency, but at the same time demand is to be also cut and that is only possible through a social through awareness program and through social initiatives and identifying the cause for it and try to cut down that cause. And finally, it has to be also decriminalized because of this there is a stigma and people will try to hide this and so it will not come to the surface. So, that is also, also becomes an important thing, but it is an policy, policy issue. Coming to the pharmacological approaches towards uh, tre treating drug dependence, there are different uh, treatment goals. In order to alleviate the withdrawals, we have options like and also it will vary depending on what is the drug that is causing the abuse or the dependence. Oral methadone is used for alleviating withdrawals in case of opioids because opioids means in this case heroin or morphine because methadone is relatively weaker agonist, but it will produce some kind of uh, uh, pleasure response for some time. And so, that is taken that is actually of relatively, but it causes lesser methadone will cause some pleasure response, but it will cause less harm. So, in order to alleviate the withdrawals, withdrawal syndrome oral methadone is used. On the other hand clonidine it is it is a drug it is alpha 2 agonist alpha 2 receptor agonist and it is used for alleviating the withdrawals, withdrawal syndrome in opioid dependence, in alcohol dependence, in nicotine dependence. So, this is very interesting to note the same drug is, be, is being used for three different types of uh, drugs that are causing dependence. So, there is some sharing the common platform. So, that is only possible because at the mechanistic level they resemble the development of dependence. Propranolol is also used to reduce symptoms of peripheral sympathetic stimulation. So, propranolol as, as a non selective beta blocker particularly symptoms like palpitations, 
tachycardia and tremor okay these symptoms will be lowered by and these are all uh, characteristic symptoms of drug dependence so they will be lowered by propranolol the coming to another approach for long term substitution here also for opioid dependent persons one can think of using methadone one can think of using buprenorphine and also to the extent legal heroin in certain societies and certain countries some countries for the purpose of for medical purpose for managing opioid dependence there is permission to use heroin that is what is called legal heroin coming to use of nicotine patches or nicotine chewing gums for tobacco dependent subjects there is another drug which has been used for the same purpose that is varenicline which is basically a nicotine receptor partial agonist so it will produce lesser degree of pleasure response but it will prevent the abstinence or the or, or the uh, withdrawal sy symptoms to occur coming to another group which causes blocking or blockade of the different responses like we have naltrexone which is an opioid antagonist it 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 is used to block the opioid effects we have mecamylamine which is basically a ganglion ganglionic nicotinic receptor blocker and it blocks the nicotine effects we also recently there are initiatives that certain vaccines are being developed vaccines against nicotine and cocaine binding receptors and they are under development it is expected that uh, uh, some proteins to which the nicotine and co cocaine they they get and bound receptor protein against that the antibodies will be generated again uh, that that protein is actually uh, antigen is going to be identified and and uh, and against that the vaccine is developed so that when the vaccine is administered after that if nicotine or cocaine is taken it will it will it will bind with that and thereby these drugs will not be allowed to bind with this nat natural receptors and it can that is how it can help in blocking the response we have another kind of therapy that is called aversive therapy or also known as anti abuse therapy antagonizing abuse so anti abuse therapy there is one molecule called disulfiram which is used for inducing unpleasant response in an alcoholic and thereby there will be a distaste distaste will be developed uh, by the user after he has experienced this unpleasant reaction after taking alcohol while he is on disulfiram therapy so he will not he will stop taking alcohol any further that is what is called aversive therapy with disulfiram in alcoholics and finally we have another treatment approach that is called anti craving this is particularly important in situations where there is addiction so drugs that otherwise cause addiction in such situation anti craving drugs are effective in case of tobacco dependence we have bupropion which is an anti depression which also has an additional nicotinic receptor antagonistic property so that's how it helps we have clonidine again clonidine which is an alpha 2 agonist and also newer agent alpha 2 agonist alpha 2 receptor agonist lofexidine so these are also used in tobacco dependence as anti craving after after the subjects they are put to this kind of therapy they will have less tendency or less craving towards repeated use similarly in case of alcohol dependence anti craving therapy is is mediated or is used through use of naltrexone which is an opioid antagonist use of acamprosate which is an nmda receptor blocker use of ibogaine which is again a natural substance baclofen then topiramate and lamotrigine which are an anti epileptics so all these drugs they are used in against craving in case of alcohol dependence similarly we have cocaine dependence and in cocaine dependence we use uh, topiramate and uh, lamotrigine 
we also use the gamma hydroxy butyric acid GHB in as anti craving agent in cocaine dependence. One can use ibogaine and baclofen in dependence caused by the different stimulants like amphetamine and methyl amphetamine. We have in case of opioid dependence one can use baclofen as anti craving agent. So, finally, to sum up sometimes some drugs and substances are taken not for medical reasons, but because they can cause pleasure responses that is what is called hedonic intention of using medicines using drugs and this may happen with both licit and illicit drugs with both prescription and non prescription drugs. Eventually their use becomes repetitive because they, they cause pleasure people will tend to take it repeatedly. On repetitive use tolerance develops and that makes the user dependent on the drug and finally, it may turn them addict. Such use referred to as drug abuse cause harm to the users as well as to others in the society and also is linked to criminality. So, we have to do away with this. The mechanism of development of drug abuse in the form of dependence, tolerance and addiction include involvement of the mesolimbic dopamine reward pathway besides of course, the genetic makeup of the individual and the different environmental factors and the cues that may motivate the person to go for this drugs of abuse repeatedly. There are different pharmacological approaches that overlap for dependence with different drugs as they share the same central mechanisms towards their development. So, that is in a nutshell about the principles that are that can be used for the management of drug abuse, drug dependence and drug addiction. Thank you very much. If there are questions we can discuss them. Thank you.